eat a lot. Here we are in front of the nice roaring fire. And um, my name's Amanda and I have three great stories for us today. First one, these are three of my favorite stories. First one is The Incredible Book Eating Boy. This is written and illustrated by Oliver Jeffers. Let's see, oh man, I hope this kid doesn't come to our library. He's eating so many books. Henry loved books, but not like you and I love books. No, not quite. Henry loved to eat books. It all began quite by mistake one afternoon when he wasn't paying attention. He wasn't sure at first and tried eating a single word just to test. Next, he tried a whole sentence and then the whole page. Yes, Henry definitely liked them. By Wednesday, he had eaten a whole book. Oh no. And by the end of the month, he could eat a whole book in one go. Henry loved eating all sorts of books, storybooks, dictionaries, atlases, joke books, books of facts, and even math books. But red ones were his favorite and he was going through them at a fierce rate. Oh no, look, he looks like he's at the library. But here's the best bit. The more he ate, the smarter he got. He ate a book about goldfish and then he knew what to feed Ginger. Before long, he could do his father's crossword in the newspaper and was even smarter than his teacher in school. Wow. Henry loved being smart and he thought that if he kept going, he might even become the smartest person on earth. So he kept eating books and he kept getting smarter and smarter and smarter. He went from eating whole books whole to eating them three or four at a time. Books about anything. Henry wasn't fussy and he wanted to know it all. But then things started going not quite so well. I'm going to eat you. In fact, they started going very, very wrong. Henry was eating too many books and too quickly at that. He was beginning to feel a little ill. I do not recommend eating books. It does not sound like a good idea. But here is the worst bit. Everything he was learning was getting mixed up. He didn't have time to digest it properly. It began quite embarrassing for him to speak. Suddenly, Henry did it at all. Oh no. More than one person told him he should stop eating books. So Henry gave up eating books and sat sadly for a long time. What was he to do? Then after a while and almost by accident, Henry picked up a half eaten book from the floor, but instead of putting it in his mouth, Henry opened it up and began to read it. And it was so good. Henry discovered that he loved to read and he thought that if he read enough, he might still become the smartest person on earth. It would just take a little bit longer. Now Henry was reads all the time, although every now and then, oh, it looks like he took a little nibble out of this book. That's a pretty silly one. All right, I have two more stories for you here today. And this is one of my all time favorite, favorite, favorite books. It is called Strega Nona. A lot of books about eating. Let's see what they have to eat in this book. Let's see. In a town in Calabria a long time ago, there lived a little old lady called Strega Nona, which means Grandma Witch. Although all the people in the town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priests and the sisters of the convent went because Straganona did have a magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made several potions for the girls who wanted husbands and she was very good at getting rid of warts. But Straganona was getting old and she needed someone to help her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. Let's see what she's gonna do, what they're gonna do. And big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Straganona, 
You must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Stregonona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anyone touch it. Oh, see, si, yes, said Big Anthony. And so the days went by, Big Anthony did his work, and Stregonona met the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in right next to the goat shed, and he had food to eat. One evening when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Stregonona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Stregonona standing over the pasta pot. <gasps> She sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And the pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Stregonona sang, enough, enough, pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful, said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. And Stregonona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony because he didn't get to see Stregonona blow three kisses to the magic pasta pot. And this is what happened. The next day when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everyone about the pasta pot. And naturally everyone laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself? You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony said, it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself? You better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said. Such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook. And then they'll be sorry. That day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought, because two days later, Stregonona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go to the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden, feed the goat and milk her, and for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Strega, Stregonona said Big Anthony, but inside he was thinking, my chance has come. Oh, no. As soon as Stregonona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Now let's see if I can remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pop, boil me some pasta nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. Aha, said Big Anthony, and he ran to the town square jumped on the fountain and shouted, everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Stregonona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. Of course, everyone laughed, but ran home to get forks and plates and platters and bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Stregonona's, the pasta pot was so full, it was beginning to overflow. Uh-oh. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and platters and bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sister from the convent. And some people came back for two or three helpings, but the pot was never empty. When all had had their fill, Big Anthony sang, enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot, so simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day, but alas, not blow three kisses. He went outside and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to compliments from everyone that he didn't notice the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the convent said, oh, Big Anthony, look. And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Stregonona's house and was coming out the door. <gasps> Oh no. Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept pouring out of it. Big 
Big Anthony grabbed the cover and put it on the pot and sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover at Big Anthony as well and spilled on the floor of Stregonona's house. Stop, yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop. And if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house. Out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta and the pot kept right on bubbling. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic songs again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By the time the pasta was on its way down the road and all the people were running, Oh, no. Too much pasta. We must protect our town with the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything to make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling. The pasta kept coming. We are lost, said the town. The people and the priest and the sister of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town, they cried. And it certainly would have had Stregonona not come down the road, home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what had, had happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses, and with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling, and the pasta came to a halt. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Stregonona, the people cried. But then they turned on Big Anthony. String him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Stregonona. The punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and held it out to Big Anthony. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Stregonona said, and I want to sleep in my bed tonight. So start eating. And he did. Poor Big Anthony. Right. Camp read a lot. Campers, I have one more book for you today. This is another favorite of mine. It is called Interrupting Chicken. It was bedtime for the little red chicken. Okay, my little chicken said, Papa, are you all ready to go to sleep? Yes, Papa, but you forgot something. What's that? asked Papa. A bedtime story. All right, said Papa, I'll read one of your favorites. And of course, you are not going to interrupt the story tonight, are you? Oh no, Papa, I'll be good. Hmm, let's see, I hope he's good. Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, 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 they began to eat the house until the old woman who lived there came out and said, what lovely children, why don't you come inside? They were just about to follow her when... Out jumped the little red chicken and said, don't go in, she's a witch. So Hansel and Gretel did not the end. Wait a second. Chicken. Yes, Papa. You interrupted the story. Try not to get so involved. I'm sorry, Papa, but she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. Let's try another story. I'll be good. What do you think? Think you can interrupt? <sighs> little Red Riding Hood. Take this basket of goodies to Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother, but don't stray from the path. The woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep woods. By and by, she met a wolf who wished her good morning. She was about to answer him when... Out jumped the little red chicken and said, don't talk to strangers! So Little Red Riding Hood did at the end. Oh, man. Chicken? Yes, Papa, you did it again. You interrupted two stories and you're not even sleepy. I know, Papa. I'm sorry, but he was a mean old wolf. Yes, now let's get back into bed. Okay, Papa, let's try one more little story. I'll be good. Chicken Little. Chicken Little was hit on the head by an acorn. The sky is falling, she thought. She was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy, Ducky Lucky, Henny Penny, and everyone on the farm the sky was falling when... 
little red chicken and she said, don't panic, it was just an acorn. So Chicken Little did it, the end. Chicken? Yes, Papa? You did it again. Oh, Papa, I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read one more story and I promise I'll fall asleep. But Chicken said, Papa, we are out of stories. Oh no, Papa, I can't go to sleep without a story. Then said Papa yawning, oh, why don't you tell me a story? Are you tell a story, said Little Red Chicken? Okay, Papa, here we go. Um, bedtime for Papa by Chicken. Once there was a little red chicken who put her papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She even gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed wide awake all Whenever you see Z's on the page like that, it means someone is sleeping. Papa? The papa fell asleep. Good night, papa. All right, kiddos, that is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed all those stories and I hope you are enjoying Pamp Read a lot, a whole lot. We are enjoying reading, we are enjoying reading you guys' stories too. Um, all right, that's it for me today.